Hey everybody, hope you're keeping really well. So this quick video, we're going to take a look at one of the components you'll find in your bevel down bench planes, whether they're metal or whether they're wood. So we have back in the day, somebody invented this, the cap iron or the chip breaker, however you want to name it, which fixes to the cutting iron. And some people say that the reason that the cap iron ex exists is to reduce vibration. If we think about that, just look how thick that iron is. Down there it must be a quarter of an inch thick, it's a beast. Imagine that locked into a wooden plane with a wedge. There's going to be no vibration issue there at all. And they did make single iron planes before this for hundreds and hundreds of years. These are reg kind of recent innovations and look at the work that's gone into this. You know, this was, wasn't some kind of, kind of Mickey Mouse thing that somebody came up with. And people who were buying things, this would have been much more extra work to do. And it would have cost a working person more money. Now, they wouldn't have wasted it. Now, what it does do is increase the working range of your plane a great deal. I'm not going to go too much into the wooden plane side of it because most people use metal planes. Now, here's number four standing. And what I should probably do for this video is take the route that most... YouTubers use, which is to make a statement, pick up a thin little piece of pine and plane the edge of a piece of pine, or pick up a piece of hardwood and orientate the grain in such a way that it's not going to be problematic. Now, here's a piece of cherry. You can see I've just put on some directional lines on the side of it. The grain is lifting up this way. So if you've got a choice, and you would in this situation, if you had to plane it, you want to plane it in this direction, that's going to get you the best trouble-free surface finish. Okay, so I have equipped this number four Stanley with a special kind of cap iron, which we'll look at after I've done the planing. Okay, so this is with the grain, with the special painted cap iron, and you can see that I'm merrily planing the wood without difficulty. Shavings are exiting the, the plane body, there's no problem there. Certainly no clogging of any kind happening and the surface finish, absolutely incredible. Okay, so absolutely fine, no problem there at all. So I'll let you look at the surface finish. And you can see it's radiant. Look at it, no tears, it's absolutely perfect. But what if we switch it the other way around and we plane against the grain? This is always going to be suboptimal, okay? Suboptimal for a few reasons. Whenever possible, you want to go with the grain. But there might be pockets of grain that move around on you and you need to take a through shaving. That's the most beneficial way that you can work. It's much better than having to work along at 90 degrees and then scrape it. It's like by that time, just invest in a belt sander. Okay, so same plane, same piece of wood. Now what I'm going to do is it's going to be, oh, that's what you've got. Suddenly, I'm still planing away, but my finish is dreadful. What's happened with my brand new painted cap iron system? Let's bring you a bit closer. Wow, check out that one. That's not good, is it? All ripped to pieces. So if that was maybe a project piece and it was close to final dimension, you're gonna whip out your smoothing plane. You could have some big problems on your hands. That's, that's a real, real mess. Now let me show you the new painted cap iron system. Oh, there is none. I took an old one, rusty old one from a car boot sale and cut the front part off. Now, the lever cap was still adding tension to the front down here. And there was no problem with vibration. You know, I'm planing hardwood Yes, it's suboptimal. You wouldn't want to set your plane up like that. But a lot of people will tell you, you don't need to worry about the cap iron. Set it back this far away. It's not going to matter. Set it back a quarter of an inch. They don't work for controlling grain. And even 
the term chip breaker is somehow offensive. You know, it's a cap iron and you must call it nothing else. In a strange way, although I do call it a cap iron myself, um, chip breaker is kind of closer to the description. So to reset this plane is going to take a minute or two, so I'm going to save you that. I had to also raid one of my old planes and cut down the stud to allow the fact that, you know, I had to have a completely different setup. So what I'm going to do is just switch to a different plane. Now, I've not sharpened any differently, and you can see that we had some pretty horrific results here. I don't have a million planes to just keep setting up in the line for you. Let's take a look at this one. Now, this cap iron is set up very, very differently than this one. Okay, this one misses and it misses as good as a mile. That could be a quarter inch back and it's still gonna do the same as this. Sod all, all right? Now this one, it's gonna be really hard for you guys. I've set that close. It's really tricky with primitive phone cameras to get it, but it's close. Now, I could say to you, set it this, set it that, and I'm gonna read out to you in another video in a minute what Stanley actually say about this. But it's something you gain with experience. So I've reorientated this one to work with the grain initially, just to clean up what is some pretty diabolical grain rip. It doesn't matter what type of plane you're using, it can be brand new fancy planes or it can be old baileys or wooden planes, whatever you want, it all works exactly the same way. This one hasn't been sharpened to like P1 billion I don't have sharpening stones that do that. Okay, soon getting through that. Okay, we nearly cleaned that up. So we're back again, nice and clean, no tears, all completely gone, all gone. So let's turn it around and let's work into that grain, okay? Now, when you're gonna work into the grain, it's always suboptimal, okay? It's not ideal. You're always gonna to wanna to work with the grain. But this is a lot less risky way of doing it. That's the best way to put it. Sometimes it's just perfect as it is. Other times it might not be. Grabbed a bit too much there. So I'm working against the grain now. What you do notice when your cap iron is closer is you do get much more resistance. So it's not something you want to do all the time. So let me take that one out for you. And you can see here, I've got no tearing. It's completely smooth. Now what you will notice is that where there is some of this grain that moves around, there is this slight change in color. It's not that perfect brightness that we had when we worked perfectly with the grain, but the risk is gone, okay? Say I hadn't noticed what I was doing, and I just went for it. I could have, like before, just ripped a chunk out if I just keep showing you as close as I can, and there's nowhere down through. Can I catch my nail? Everything is perfectly smooth, okay? 
Again, it's not as bright and perfect as when you work with the grain. So, what's the conclusion? Well, you can experiment for yourself, but it's quite clear to see that the cap iron extends the working range of your plane. You don't always want to have it murderously close. You can see there, I was having to really almost fight against the plane. It was kind of hard work. But sometimes it's useful to have that facility. Now, you can go for other things like putting a back bevel on a planing iron to give you that kind of more of a scraping cut. You can go to scrapers, but it seems so strange to almost tell everybody that here's your standard plane, just forget about this. I would say that to somebody who's beginning, you know, just keep it back, mill and a half, practice how to use it on a piece of pine, get yourself dialed in. Then afterwards, just experiment a little bit. It's not time consuming and it's not difficult. So I hope that's kind of enlightened you. Give it a try. It's not world ending if you don't, but I just recommend it. Give it a shot and see how you get on.